Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for watching. In today's video I want to talk to you about a Synology feature that I think is one of the most underutilized features in Synology and I think that's even an understatement and that's too bad because it's really nifty and really handy. I'm talking about login portals and what do login portals really give us? They give us the, uh, the option to create a direct path, a direct login portal to a Synology application. Of course, it needs to support it. And we don't need to go through the main uh, interface just to open the application and work in it. For example, Virtual Machine Manager, uh, uh, Download Station. We can just log in directly into the HTML version of the application. There's added convenience in it. There is added security in it because we can delegate permissions to users and give them direct access to the application and not anything else. We will see how to configure this option. There is a quick and dirty way and there is a fancier, nicer way. Let's go over to the computer and see how to configure both of them. Join me. Alright guys, so we are at the computer and the first thing that I want to do is to first show you the end result. What you will be getting when you configure login portals. Now I already went ahead on my Synology NES and created a login portal for Synology Virtual Machine Manager. This is already configured, this is already prepared and I want to show you what it looks like as an end result. So let's open a new browser window and type the URL for the login portal that we have uh, configured. All right, and as you can see, we get a login portal for Synology VMM. You can see that it's different than the regular or uh, uh, main Synology login portal. We will be logging in with the same username and password. And as you can see, we get a sort of quote unquote HTML version only of Synology Virtual Machine Manager. These are the virtual machines. These are all the uh, other configurations. This is Virtual Machine Manager, just in a sort of a, if you can call it that, a browser uh, version, Virtual Machine Manager only. This is something that when I know that I need to do something in Virtual Machine Manager and nothing else, I will log into VMM this way exactly. And there is also an added benefit because you can delegate Virtual Machine Manager tasks to a user and give him only this URL so you know that definitely when he uses this URL he cannot be messing up or snooping around anywhere else on your Synology NES. He will only be getting Virtual Machine Manager. So this is the end result. Alright, so how do we go about configuring a, a, a login portals. First of all, we will, we will discover the quick and dirty way, which is really a no-brainer to configure. Just go over to your Synology NES, open control panel, go to login portal and applications. Now, I've already configured Virtual Machine Manager. Let's go and configure Download Station login portal just for, uh, for the demonstration sake. Click on the Download Station portal, Double click on it, sorry. And now, an alias is something that you can decide for your own. It will be added to the URL. I mean, uh, your Synology NES IP address or hostname slash uh, whatever you configure here. Just for a uh, lack of a better idea, we will uh, roll with uh, Synology's hint and call it download. Let's customize the ports. I'm going to choose, I don't know, 15,000 and 15,001. All right, just as, as an example, of course you can specify a different domain if you're using a different domain and an access control profile. We will not be getting into those in this demonstration. Click on save. Now, once you've saved, you have created a login portal. I mean, quick and dirty and a no-brainer. Let's open a new browser window type the IP address of our Synology NES. Sorry. And let's try to use the alias 
that we have configured. And as you can see, we get it working. It, I mean, it's quick and dirty and we get a certificate error, uh, but it, it really works. You can use it like it, like this, sorry. And as you can see, a login portal, let's log in. And as you can see, this is download station, a login portal just for download station. It works. And if you don't mind using it the quick and dirty way, you can definitely use it exactly like this. But there's a, as I said, a fancier, nicer way to do it. And this will be utilizing Synology's reverse proxy. Now, if you're not familiar with Synology reverse proxy, I really recommend, I highly recommend that you go over and watch WonderTech's video about Synology uh, uh, reverse proxy. I'm going to put a link to it in the top right corner of the video and in the description of the video. Friend from WonderTech, uh, from WonderTech, sorry, is not only a dear friend of mine, but an excellent professional and he has created what I consider to be the best Synology reverse proxy tutorial video on YouTube to date. Now, this video is in DSM-6, but as you will see, the differences in reverse proxy between DSM-6 and 7 are really not, not profound. So, if you're familiar with the reverse proxy, you can go ahead and watch my next steps. I'm going to breeze through it, but if you're not, I really recommend you watch this video so you would understand what's going on. I, and I can definitely guarantee that after watching WonderTech's video, you will understand the reverse proxy, what it does, how to uh, uh, issue certificates. Let's encrypt certificates so you will not get uh, uh, the red warning in the browser tab. So definitely give this video a watch. So let's go over to our Synology portal and let's uh, do it the fancier way. So we, we already have the portal created and as we as we saw it already works so let's head over to advanced to reverse proxy and we will need to create an entry for this login portal in reverse proxy let's click on create let's call it download just as a name so we will know what this reverse proxy entry uh, is doing change the protocol to https and let's give this a, a, a login portal a host name Let's call it download and then dot and the DDNS, the DDNS host name or FQDN that you have configured according to Frank's video. For me, this is the FQDN. Port is 443 and the destination where do we want to end up when we uh, configure it? Let's give it the IP address. And the port that we have configured. If I remember correctly, it's, sorry, it's 5001. Close, let's see if these are the ports. Yeah, all right. So let's see if it works. Let's type the URL. Now, as you can see, I'm using a colon 4443. That's because I'm not forwarding port 443 into my environment. That's just my personal preference. You can uh, port forward 443. That's a completely valid use case. Let's see if it works. And indeed it does. We are getting a login portal for the download station without a certificate warning. We can log in. and we get the download station login portal. So as you can see, there's a quick and dirty way, just login uh, using the IP address 
and the alias sorry you can just use the port eh, eh, colon the port that you've configured and you can do it the nicer fancier way using reverse proxy and a certificate of course so you will get eh, 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 you will not get the certificate at all in the eh, eh, in the browser window but as you can see in general it's very easy to do and it's very convenient it gives you i think a lot of benefit in convenience so guys this was a, a, a quick tutorial on how to use a Synology login portals. If you like this video, please give it a like. Join our Synology Facebook group. The link to the group will be in the description of this video. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.